Have you ever wondered how to keep track of your daily business? Well, probably not, but here's a solution anyway. Let me introduce the toilet counter. Probably the most useless thing I've ever designed, but I'm sure some of you waited their whole life for this. The core of the toilet counter is the mechanism. At first, I tried to reinvent the concept of how a mechanical counter works, but all I ended up counting were my failures. It worked in theory, but you were able to move every ring freely on its own, and if not perfectly in place, it got stuck when counting. Maybe with some more brain it would have worked, but I thought I might try something else. So I went back to existing concepts and adjusted them to my needs. Shoutouts to 3D Printy for his great video about a mechanical counter. The concept is really easy once you understand it. Here is a little animation I made because I bought a 3D printer instead of a good camera. This is one of the rings displaying a single digit, and it's able to rotate freely. It has a gear on the bottom, but let's focus on the top side. There are only two gear teeth with a deeper space between them. Next is this small gear. The teeth are on two different levels on one side. The longer teeth are blocking the rotation of the small gear. Once the small gear reaches the teeth of the outer gear, one of the large teeth fits into the space of the outer gear and is able to rotate. Now we place another ring on top of it. One full rotation of the first ring will then cause one-tenth rotation of the next gear. In theory, this could be extended unlimited times, but at some point the forces will get too big. But let's remember what this video is about. I don't think more than three digits are needed. If you somehow get the counter to reset within a year, you should visit a doctor. Now you know how the counting mechanism works, but how do we control it? Spinning the wheel on your own seems boring. It's a toilet and I want it to flush. So I came up with this solution. Flushing the toilet works like a ratchet. It takes the ring with it in one direction but snaps on the way back. This little nose is preventing it from rotating backwards when pulling the lever back up. The other nose is just to give some slight resistance and prevent the ring from moving too much because of some tolerances. You clicked this video for the toilet, but now you hopefully learned something new. You should leave a comment, like and subscribe to learn more in the future. The assembly of all parts is not that hard, but my cheap phone camera may make it harder. I'm still trying to explain it as good as I can, as there are a few things to look out for. The first step is to screw together these two parts with M3x10 screws. While I seem to struggle with it, this shouldn't be that hard. Use the number disc with the ratchet kind of gear. Keep an eye out for the two single teeth on top. Use the center block with the bridge in the middle and push the snapper on the back of it. Use some glue if it's too loose. Insert it into the wheel so the open slot aligns with the two teeth of the outer part. Now take the small gear and fit it onto the center block. Make sure the side that has two different lengths of teeth is looking downwards, and make sure that one of the longer teeth lays between the two teeth of the outer ring. Use the next ring and place it on top. Make sure it aligns like the first one. Now use the next center block that has an open space for another gear in it and place it like the one below. You may have noticed that I'm horrible at naming the parts. Now the next small gear, same like the one before.
place the last ring on it. As well as the last center block. Make sure to orient this part correctly so the small step is on the same side as the gears are. This is one of the parts that broke the most. I printed it with normal PLA, but I had some parts that were able to make 1000 steps before they were worn down, and others were only capable of doing 100. Might be worth to print a few more of those. Now use the whole thing and slide it in. Fix its position using those two parts. Screw on the lever using an M3 by 30 screw. Slide on the lid. If the lid is to loose, there are two holes for magnets on the lid and body that you can glue 5 times one millimeter magnets in. That's it. Thank you for watching. Check the printables link in the description and check out my other projects. Why are you still watching?